Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. So I'm going to go to Visual Studio right now. And we'll go File, New Project, WPF Application. What happened to the XAML <laughs> app? Now, I'm also going to be talking about just Visual Studio as a way to build the WPF program as well. Okay? So... We looked at one approach where we wrote nothing but C-sharp code. What Visual Studio uses is sort of like the middle of the road approach. Because believe it or not, you could also write an entire application using nothing but XAML. There's actually a way to embed in the XAML document real code. Now that's not recommended, but it can be done. And I'll show you that too. But let's just look at what we get through this code file approach. So over here in my Solution Explorer, you'll see that I have an application and a main window. But behind each one of the XAML files is a relative uh, code file. Right? So if I were to look at mainwindow.xaml, that's what I'm seeing displayed in my editor over here. Right? In the markup, let me just go ahead and zoom that in for you. In the markup, you can see there is a XAML attribute called class. So what this is basically saying is that this markup is working in conjunction with some class called main window. And that would be in the code file, right? So there's main window right here. Okay. So now let's look at what happens to this markup. I'm just gonna drag and drop over onto my designer Maybe just a simple button. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Now we can see how Visual Studio is authoring the markup for me. I just did a fresh rebuild of this computer, by the way. That's why all my windows are gone and whatnot. Let me pull up the property editor. So I could go ahead and grab this button. And I could start to make some visual changes to it. I could start to go ahead and, you know, set background colors and foreground colors and whatnot. I could start to handle different events, right? So I might come over here and change the background color. Just something we can look at. And then maybe I'll change the cursor to be a weight icon. So as I'm making all my adjustments over here, we can see that Visual Studio, I'll go back to this mode, is just authoring that markup for us, right? So there's my background color and cursor. Now I'll run the program just to compile it, right? So not too surprisingly, there's my application. It doesn't do much, but it's doing something. But the important part, the part that I want to illustrate right now, is what actually got compiled. So I'm going to go back to my Solution Explorer, click on Show All Files. I'm going to drill under my OBJ debug folder. Now, this is stuff which is more of a good to know for educational purposes situation. You're never going to want to edit any of these files because you could very easily break stuff. You know, every time you recompile, all that's going to be put together. But let's just try to connect the dots here. If I go back to my primary C sharp, file. You see how main window is a partial class? And you might have, you might know what that is, right? In, in .NET 2.0 we got this partial keyword, which means that this, the class can be defined across multiple code files. Really useful for tool support. Well, you see this file over here? Main window .g .cs. That is created by the compiler 
And inside of this partial class definition, you would find, for example, the declaration of your XAML elements. So there was the button I threw on there. And then inside of initialize component, which is called from your constructor, right? There is this code which is going to be loading up the binary XAML. And what we call that, we call that BAML. We can actually see that over here too, main window.baml. So look, right? There's my background color and there is my weight cursor. So all this markup, so all this stuff that we see back over here, and it certainly is not a lot of markup, but all that markup is going to be used to generate the G file and the BAML resource. And then this data is going to be packaged up inside of your compiled application. Right? So that's why we said earlier, you don't ever have to worry about shipping along all this XAML to the customer. It's all going to be packaged up inside of the executable. Now, thankfully, we have great tool support to generate markup. You know, even Visual Studio has some pretty decent support for all your basic stuff. Laying out a window, creating a dialog box. You could do all that in Visual Studio pretty well. And Visual Studio 2010 even has some better features that we didn't have at all in 2008. Like you might have seen, I used that little brush editor. There's also better support for data binding. But really, Blend is, is where it's at when it comes to productivity for XAML. But in any case, a tool typically builds the XAML for us. That doesn't mean that it's not good for us to know how to go back and tweak it. So what I want to do here is kind of just walk you through some pieces of XAML syntax. And again, we'd be going into this in more detail in the full class. But let's just take a look at this code here. Okay, these are two different ways to describe the same exact button, right? Up on top, I've described this, the button purely in markup. So the way that it works here is that every XAML element is gonna be mapping to a class inside of some namespace, right? Some .NET namespace. Every attribute on the element will either map to a property or an event on that class. So we can see that I've given my button a name. I've decided on a height and a width. Here the content is just a simple blob of text, but remember the other button with the graphic inside of it? Remember content can be anything you want. And then I've also handled the click event. Well down below, here's the exact same button put together entirely in C sharp code. Okay, so they're just kind of two sides of a coin here. Now let me just kind of touch on this topic. Remember that it is actually possible to build an entire WPF program without ever having any actual code files. Please remember this is not recommended. It is supported, but it, would, it just wouldn't be a very clean separation of concerns at all. It kind of reminds me of back in the day when we had classic ASP, you know, big mismatch of script code and markup. Well, we can kind of do the same thing here. Now, let's just see how it looks just to get a better handle on things. Here is a XAML file that describes a window, right? Now, notice that my window has as content a single button. Okay, now here's the weird part. This is the part right down here that would not be a recommended practice whatsoever. But there is this little element called a code element. And what we can do is we can embed in the XAML file within a C data section actual code. Right? So that's basically the click handler for my button. Now I could also describe completely through markup the application. Remember, you don't have to have a visual aspect, right? So here's the application. We can see that in this version of my application, 
I'm just going to handle the exit event, which is inside of this code element. Okay. So at this point, what I basically have is I have these two XAML files. Now what the heck do I do with them? Well, the C Sharp and Visual Basic compilers, they don't have any clue what to do with raw XAML. Right? They're just going to start throwing all kinds of crazy errors. But MS Build has some target files that can transform the XAML into the code equivalent. And that's what Visual Studio did in the background when I showed you those little G files. Okay? So if we had a build script, I could pull up MS Build right now in the command prompt, point it to the location of my two XAML files, and lo and behold, I would have a true blue .NET executable. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.